Hello guys, welcome back to another episode review of Holyoaks 4, 3rd of December 2022. A very interesting episode because a lot has happened, even I'm struggling to uh, kind of remember all the details because, and this is what I love, when it, when it comes to a soap and they're showing an episode and there's a lot that's happening in one episode. This is what makes an episode, in my opinion, I don't know about you guys, but when there's so many storylines going on, um, it's just so interesting because you know, oh yeah, this because it's it's continually um, giving stories and keep engaging viewers in and us in. If there's, you know, sometimes you must know if there's some episodes, there's only literally covering one or two stories, and it's only certain characters. It can, it can, although those kind of episodes they can be quite big, but then uh, yeah, it's just hard to keep us engaged. Anyway, let's get into this. Romy and Olivia, they were rehearsing for a school nativity play, I believe. Romy just got really frustrated um, with Olivia because she's just melodramatic acting during the rehearsal and she's just over-dramatising, taking the limelight, as Romeo said. Then he stormed off to the park. Prince then found him and they just had a little chat. I think Romy's just explaining, obviously, Olivia's too much. Um, Prince is kind of persuading Romeo to still go on and he goes he doesn't really know I think in the end he managed to convince him and then obviously Romeo drifted topics and kind of like said oh I think in a jokey way but he's being serious oh it's not too late to back out of the marriage now because obviously Prince and uh, Olivia are supposed to get married I think that was a bit hurtful if they weren't best friends um, because obviously Prince just took it and because he knows obviously he's quite close with Romeo so he's um yeah it's, it's not really that offensive um but I think Romeo just needs to chill out because obviously I know what Romeo's feeling in terms of obviously we all know what Olivia's like um but I think Romeo he might be doing himself more harm because if because usually when you're badgering and you can see the truth in someone and no one no one sees it, then you're just kind of... And also your loved ones, they're going to they're gonna think you're acting irrationally and it's not going to look too good for you. You might even lose some friendships along the way, so it's just best to keep quiet uh, in, a, in a soap land uh, from what we've seen from before. Anyway, but that's what makes it interesting, obviously, when people... Some people see the truth and some people don't. And what was hilarious in that scene between Romeo and Prince is when uh, Romeo made Prince to solemnly swear, put his hand on his chest and solemnly swear that Olivia is a big diva. <laughs> and then uh, Olivia literally, uh, I think she was like nearby and she walked up and she heard everything. And Prince had his you know, hand on his chest and saying, I solemnly swear that Olivia's a diva. Unfortunately, she's heard that. And then... Uh, as soon as they realised Olivia's heard that, just their reaction was so funny that, like, uh, I don't know, when you, I'm pretty sure you guys must have laughed as well. Um, but, yeah, Prince has definitely got some work to put in there after after that. Yeah, and then as well, I don't know, I think she's the one that's messed up a lot recently in terms of, like, obviously faking her qualifications and, in you know, impersonating a teacher. And, um, yeah, I don't know, but obviously, then again, having your partner having to hear your partner say that about you and, and solemnly swear it is quite dramatic and then you hear that of course that's going to be very hurtful i can understand that we're going to park that because i think i've talked quite a bit on on olivia prince and romeo situation um the next one i want to talk about is the situation between verity and eric eric uh he's just serving drinks to some uh girls in the pub and i don't know and verity looks quite pleased with him because He's managing to talk to women, etc. And it's almost like as if Verity is wing womaning uh, Eric and basically telling him what to do. Go chat to them, have some confidence, etc. Which Eric has done. Uh, I do find the that scene, I'm not sure how to feel about that to be honest. Because uh, I just feel like Eric, it needs to be out that Eric spiked all these women. And the fact that Verity's kept it quiet thinking he's going to reform, etc. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really think... Verity knows what she's doing in that sense, especially when Mason's asking Eric for help um, to log back into the men's first group chat or something, and uh, which Eric did, and for, and then fortunately Verity walked in and caught Eric and basically sent Mason home, and she's having her doubts now over Eric, and and he's obviously put on the words again, 
and you know crying a little bit and saying you know all these sweet words that Verity is the one that only gives him confidence and can trust and etc and unfortunately it looks like Verity is we fall in for her back again and she might give him another chance I just think at this point she just needs to hand him in because um He's done a lot of damage and he's, he's, he's definitely not changed. Uh, we can see that. He's, he's allowed Mason to access his um, account again. Um, I th believe Verity's confiscated Eric's electronics. That's why he's not, he's, you know, he's on his behaviour. I mean, what would, what would the situation be if, he had, if he'd had access to his phone, his laptop? Um, I can't say he'd, he'd be behaving that well. Um, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I th I th he just definitely needs to be um, handed in now. And the fact that when the girls that he was serving, and I think their friend, like their friends, come along, some guy, and then the fact that he looked at him quite weirdly, and he, and, and and that's all it took for for Eric um, to to get wound up and fall back into his old ways, and and then help Mason log into his account. Um, do let me know what you think about that scene, and if you remember that far back, and what you thought about Verity, and you know, should she hand him in, or and is she giving him too many chances? Let me know. I mean, most likely yes, but we can have difference of opinions. Um, nothing wrong with that. And finally, Bobby is back home, and Goldie is definitely getting under his skin. And when he came back home, Goldie literally got him a picture of silver saying it's a present. I think she's playing some uh, intellectual, well, not really intellectual, some, yeah, what you call it, intellectual mind games. Um, it's almost like chess and Bobby's played chess before. Um, and it's like, I think Gold is just literally trying to get to him um, bit by bit until he confesses or, or comes forward. Uh, for the death of Silver, um, and Mercedes caught him as well, like Bobby going through the box, um, trying to look for the book, and obviously Mercedes said he burnt it. Bobby spinned a line on Mercedes saying that, um, you know, he kept the book because he didn't want to be anything like Silas. I mean, yeah, typical, he's very clever, he's, he's going to get away with, with it from Mercedes. Goldie, on the other hand, is not letting him get away with it, she's badgering him pestering him basically unfortunately from goldie's um side when she rang verity to basically um kind of like confide in verity saying that it's, it's kind of difficult basically to get bobby down um and and confess um uh, bobby's in the back over overheard all of the conversation and yeah that, that that was quite eerie that's that scene as well because he's just standing there at the back um listening in um you can see in his eyes that yeah that's not he's not gonna have good intentions towards goldie now and there might be a possible warning and you know what before he even came in and just the way goldie was acting uh, obviously not letting this drop and why should she because silver's a brother um and i just think i just had a feeling that yeah she's gonna come into some sort of problems with bobby because he's dangerous even though he's a kid he's dangerous and if she carries on like that she's going to have a problem and to my um like surprise it was quicker than i thought because they literally just showed that bobby he's he's overheard her conversation he knows goldie's game plan and that's it he's now gonna have gold in his mind that she's one to be careful of and if she doesn't stop her mouth then i'm gonna do something about it that's that's what he's got in his head now you can literally see it in his eyes and i i personally felt very scared for goldie um yeah i just was very scared because you know she's innocent she's loud um she doesn't she's wears a heart on her sleeve and it's not gonna look good and even though bobby's a kid he will just have that um that edge over goldie because he knows how to how to act very calm in situations which he did in the last scene he's knocked over that picture of silver goldie's kind of um through a um tantrum over it because uh, she knows he'd done it deliberately but anyway in the end there was a scene where he was drawing a picture of goldie and then crossing her eyes out but whilst they were having a conversation this is how kid this smart this kid is and um he literally said you know in other words if you don't stop what you're doing then you're gonna be up there with the angels meaning he's gonna kill her i just think that rather than saying it directly the indirectness of bobby mcqueen or just very eerie and, and, and kind of like a real threat. I even, I felt threatened. Um, yeah, I hope gold is safe though. Um, and this kid gets, you know, caught or confessed or blocked away. Or have some professional help in anything. But he's not safe knowing that 
sorry, gold is not safe with Bobby knowing that gold is not gold is not letting things um, go by. And um, Mercedes obviously wants to believe her son as much as, as she can and try to, you know, reform him as well. Um, but yeah, and unfortunately, Nana McQueen is, is siding with, um, with Mercedes and Bobby only because she can see Goldie's acting, to their eyes, irrationally and quite, quite erratically as well. I think that's the word I was looking for, erratically. And um, unfortunately, when you, when you lose your cool, then you kind of lose your, un, un, unless you don't have any evidence or hardcore evidence, then you, you lose your kind of like credibility. People's not going to believe you. They're just going to tell you to like, you know, they're going to give you an ultimatum and which has Nana McQueen has done. I do think they're going to regret it later when, when Bobby is, is out there and everyone knows he's a, um, oh, I don't, I know he's just a child, but I don't like to say it. He's kill Silas. He's kill Silver. Um, I'm going to end it there. Actually, there's one last thing I want to talk about. Um, the situation with, uh, Shaq and Verity. Yeah, he's had a bit of bad luck, obviously. Um, uh, kind of planning his Christmas round Verity and, um, Christmas is a bad time with, with Verity. She kind of stormed off. I think he has some tickets to, um, I think Winter Wonderland or some, somewhere anyway, or Nativity Play. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, she stormed off and, yeah, I think Tony informed what happened with uh, with Edward, their dad, and everything. Uh, they tried to kill, you know, obviously Tony and and Verity as well. So it's 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 a hard time for them. Um, Shaq obviously was uh, taken in, and he said, okay. Um, in the end, he's gonna. He bought a ring, showed Tony. He's gonna propose to Verity. Tony was chuffed because we all know Tony likes a good proposal. He's he's done plenty of proposals in his past. But I kind of like the duo, like Shaq and Tony. I reckon they're going to be good friends. Um, but we'll see what if Olivia uh, Verity is going to say yes, yes or no. I don't know. It might be a no. I don't know why I'm thinking that, but who knows? I think Shaq should slowly warm to her. Uh, basically, you know, like give it a bit more time rather than uh, proposing out of the blue. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this long episode review. I try to always keep it short, but I don't know. It always just becomes long. Um, Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.